This is my first time making a video, so bear with me on this one, but I wanted to put something out to help you guys prepare for your lab and your lecture exam coming up forward. My name is Chris Bell. I'm a current second year, and I wanted to try and help you guys out as much as I can. I hope that you find this helpful. If there's anything incorrect, please feel free to reach out to me anytime. But this video is about the axillary artery and its branches. As you can see here, I included a picture showing the different borders of the axillary artery. The axillary artery starts from the first rib, and then the uh, inferior border is teres major, which is down here. Um, there are a total of six branches coming off of the axillary. One branch for the first part, two branches for the second part, and then a grand total of three branches in the third part. And I'm just going to kind of show some memory hooks and mnemonics that help get me through it, and I hope they help you. The axillary artery branches are screw the lawyer, save a patient. Another mnemonic I didn't write down here is 60s teens, love, sex, and pot. Sorry for any 60s teens that are out there listening to this, but whatever helps, helps. And that's what I'm about. So screw the lawyer, save a patient. Those are six branches of the axillary artery. So we'll start with the first one, is S for superior thoracic, which is going to be branching off front directly after it passes the first rib. I don't imagine you'll be able to see this very well in the lab, uh, but in case if the, they do find a way to tag it, just know that it's supplying blood to the first and second rib, um, or the space in between those two ribs. So if you're looking at the axillary artery and, the, and it's super deep and it just passes the, the first rib, know that it's superior thoracic. Um, second branch, thoracoacromial, the, for the. This has four branches coming off of it. The best way to identify this one in the lab is find your pec muscle, specifically pec minor, and it'll lead you right to it because one of the four branches is a pectoral branch. So na naturally, thoracoacromial will be there. Uh, it's also very prominent uh, branch coming off of the axillary artery because it has four different branches. The way you remember those four different branches are cadavers are dead people. Um, I don't know how likely you'll get a you'll see a question in the lecture exam. Just know that there are four other branches coming off of thoracoacromial. And if you're just not sure what those four branches are, just think of the name, thoracoacromial. You have your clavicular, and of course, just like in the name, your acromial branch. You have a deltoid branch, and finally, you have your pectoral branch, which I talked about earlier, going to your pec minor and major. All right, so two down, four to go. The third branch, lateral thoracic. Just as the name uh, indicates, it's going along the lateral aspect of the rib cage. No surprises there. What it's going to be doing is supplying blood all the way down the side of the rib cage, specifically towards your pec muscles and your serratus anterior muscle. Um, so if you see a blood vessel and it's coming off of the axillary artery and it's going around the lateral aspect of the rib cage, it has to be lateral thoracic. Um, just know that thoracoacromial and lateral thoracic are going to be on the second part. Um, you may have heard me say first part, second part, and third part. Well, the second part is indicated by the pec minor muscle. So anything uh, underneath the pec minor will be the second part. Anything above pec minor is the first part. And anything below pec minor is going to be your third part. So back to our artery branches. We have screw the lawyer. Now we're down to save a patient. Save stands for subscapular artery. Now this one can be kind of tricky because it has two branches coming off of it. Subscapular artery has a scapular circumflex artery, which as the name indicates, is going back to supply blood to, to the scapula and thoracodorsal. So if you see a branch coming off of the axillary artery and one of them's going directly down to supply latissimus dorsi, you think thoracodorsal. If you see a branch coming off of your subscap going back to the scapula, think scapular circumflex. And if you see a tag somewhere on the lab practical where it's coming directly off the axillary artery before it does a Y and splits off into two different directions, think subscapular artery. As a pro tip, just always think, where is it coming from? Where is it going to? And that will always kind of indicate to you which artery it is. Uh, also for nerves in general. And now we're finally to the last ones, a patient for our mnemonic. 
anterior and posterior humeral circumflex. These guys are best friends. They'll be uh, right before you hit your teres major, whenever you're looking at a donor, and you will see that the anterior humeral circumflex will just as it describes. It goes anterior of the head of the humerus. No surprises there. And the posterior humeral circumflex does the posterior aspect of the humeral head. So once again, uh, just keep an eye out for it. Whenever you're looking at it, you're kind of unsure of which one's which. Just know that anterior obviously goes in front of the humerus, and posterior will be diving back. And those two arteries will be directly next to each other right before you hit the teres, and it'll be on your axillary artery. I hope you find this video helpful. Once again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or leave something in the comments. Good luck.